Here's a clean sound. This is my Fender YJM Strat. And I know it's kind of boring, but we're going to start with the stock digital delay mode. I've got the feedback off, I've got the tone centered so it's not doing anything, the parameter controls on zero, and there is no modulation. So it's just going to be a single repeat. It should sound exactly like my guitar. As expected, it sounds exactly like my guitar. So that's one of the great things about digital delay is that it is so pristine and so clear. I think this thing's running at like 32K or whatever the DD500 converters are using. So they are very high fidelity indeed. But for me, delay is all about character. So if I was on this stock standard digital delay mode, the first thing I would do is to use a tone control to make the repeats less bright. If we turn it down, say to about nine o'clock, immediately it's got more vibe. Ah, uh, this is starting to sound a bit more like delay. I would then add some modulation with the modulation depth control. So this kind of lives up to the promise that all you have to do is twist a few knobs and you get a great guitar tone. I really like that on the standard digital mode. The mysterious parameter control on this particular delay mode essentially adds like a swell to your delay repeat. So it's like an auto swell mode. I'll turn it all the way up and you can hear it in action. That's a pretty cool parameter in itself, and I'm sure you could do some very creative things like that, but a super non-original thing to do is to set this up for a dotted eighth note delay. One thing that I really like about this is that when you're using tap tempo, the stock subdivision is a quarter note, but when you press the tap division once, it goes straight to dotted eighth. So I'll turn this parameter control all the way down. We've now got a classic dotted eighth delay with modulation. That's just the kind of thing that immediately makes me happy. Having a dotted eighth delay, really easy, bit of modulation, I can dull the delay repeats, this thing's doing it straight away. Let's hear the analog mode next because I remember on the old Boss DD20, the analog mode was my favorite. Let's hear it straight up with the same settings. <laughs> And I have to say, I immediately like the analog mode in the DD DD in the DD two hundred more than the standard digital mode. Let's hear the tape mode, the parameter control in the analog mode. I'll come back to. Actually, I'll let you hear it. Just adds a bit of grit. I'll turn it all the way up. Super cool. Can it self oscillate? That's a good question. I'll turn the feedback all the way up. Ah, I remember a time when digital delays could not do that. That's super cool. Okay, so they've captured that 
set of the analog behavior. Uh, let's hear the tape delay because the parameter control here will let us select a bunch of different heads or the option to have heads with distortion. I think if you see this particular mode, like one with a dot after it, that means that there's a bit of grit added to mode one. Let's just cycle through them. Whatever mode that is, that is really nice. Let's hear the one with all three heads playing back. That's super cool, the DD20 didn't do that. I also did a demo of the DD500 you can go and check out, but that thing has so much stuff going on that I kind of got lost in all the deep editing and probably overlooked the different heads thing. The heads, playback heads thing goes even further with the drum echo, because you can get up to four simultaneous heads with this, which sounds like so. <laughs> This might be my favorite mode on this pedal. It's up between this and the analog mode. For ambient stuff, I would have to say it's definitely this four head drum echo thing that they've got going on. Uh, the shimmer delay mode, if you're familiar with the DD500, gives you this. The modulation is really nicely voiced there. I think for a pedal like the DD500, which gives you so much control, that can sometimes be like a case of too much control for some people. They don't understand what parameters do and they twist knobs and they get terrible, unusable sounds. Whereas here, everything's kind of within that range of idiocy for guitar players, like most of us, myself included. Really, we just wanna focus on being able to go, hey, give me something that sounds really good that is gonna work. And the way the modulation's voiced here, Definitely uh, definitely ticks the idiot box there because I can use it and I'm pretty happy with it. So let's move on. The Terra Echo was a uh, probably one of the more interesting modern Boss compact effect pedals. If you're familiar with the Terra Echo, uh, it does this basically. If you're unfamiliar with it, it also does this. <laughs> Thank you. 
That one just sounds like out of space to me. The one that really, really piped my attention, I watched Brett Kingman's demo of this and this pan echo mode really, really sounded good on his demo. And um, I haven't played around with it yet, but let's see if I can get it to sound decent. You'll notice that I've been playing around just hitting different subdivisions. Let's go back to that quarter note subdivision. Cool, now we've got that. Let's hear this uh, wherever we have these settings. Sounds like there's something in there which may be envelope sensitive, which is really interesting. Don't quote me on that one. There is a pattern delay mode, uh, which gives you 10 different patterns to choose from. So what I'll do is I'll level this out. I'll set the feedback to zero, turn the modulation off, set the effect level back down towards 50 or 60. Just as a quarter note, let's hear the 10 different patterns. That's cool, that's almost got some reverby stuff happening there because there's so many delay taps. Lo-fi delay kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's almost sounds like it's a really low quality digital delay in there, which, you know, being able to capture gritty, weird sounds is kind of what a lot of modern music production, a lot of modern guitar tones are all about rather than those like pristine guitar sounds. So I like the lo-fi. Next up, I love this mode as well. This is a close contender probably for second favorite mode in here. It's the dual delay. But the reason I like it is you can set a delay time. Say if I've got a quarter note value, that I can tap in here. I'll tap that one in and then I'll set with the parameter control, this sets the percentage ratio between the first delay and the second delay. So if I set this one to 75, 
The first delay is a quarter note to the tap tempo, and the second delay is 75% of that value, which is a dotted eighth. So this gives me that epic quarter note and dotted eighth delay mode at the same time. <laughs> That mode is just happiness for me as well. There's a lot of those kind of delay sounds in there. I'm a delay junkie, so this pedal is hitting the spot for me. The last mode is a ducking delay. If you're not familiar with what a ducking delay does, is it essentially has a look at the input signal, and when you're playing, it attenuates the delay, and when you're not playing, it leaves it wide open. So the parameter control here is going to control the amount of ducking basically and a lot of the time with ducking delays because there's a bunch of parameters going on it's really hard to know what to do to get it to work in this case this one just kind of works <laughs> Maybe a little too well. That's maybe the only mode that I probably need to spend a bit more time with to fully understand. So that's what it sounds like in front of a guitar amp with a clean signal. Uh, let's chuck it after some distortion. And I wanna go back to that dual delay mode and that tape mode and that analog mode. I wanna go back to every mode, but I'm not actually gonna do it. I'll just focus on the dual delay and maybe the tape mode and we'll hear it for some epic guitar solos. So doing demos of delays with clean sounds is kind of like the industry standard. And in some ways it's a bit of a necessary evil because you wanna show people what the delay sounds like. But when you're actually using delay in a musical context, a lot of the time you're gonna be playing with distortion. So let's go full shred mode with this kind of thing. This is my lead sound. <laughs> And I'm going to blend in a bit of this dual delay. I've done the old 75% trick and it's tap tempo at a quarter note. Let's hear it. <laughs> I think that sounds pretty good. Let's go to the tape mode. I also realize I totally missed the reverse mode, so we'll have a listen to that in a second as well. Where are we? We've got analog, we've got tape. Let's hear it with uh, all three tape heads on there, hey? <laughs> Thank you. 
That's pretty cool. That's got some space echo echoey kind of things going on there. Let's hit the drum mode with all four heads engaged. This should be fun. <laughs> That's cool, that's got some total grottiness about it. And uh, the analog mode, I'll keep the tone around noon. I'll, uh, yeah, let's add a bit of modulation for some character in there, let's hear it. And this grit parameter, wait, am I on analog? No, I'm on tape. We're on analog, I'll leave this grit parameter off to start with. That's pretty cool. I could go on and on and on with this particular pedal. To summarize, the things that I like about it are that it obviously sounds really, really good, right? It can do a lot of the delay sounds you would need, or basically any delay sound you could probably ever want or need. The tape, the analog, and the drum modes are really cool and have a lot of character. You've got the weird modes like the Terra Echo and the Shimmer. I would imagine that if you're playing worship music or something like that, those modes are really going to come in handy when you need to make your guitar sound like a keyboard or if you want to worship Satan like I do and play ridiculous lead guitar, uh, the dual delay mode does a thing that puts the, you know, the halo of doom around the notes. It's small, uh, there's a bunch of other options which you can go in and set up, but I didn't do any of that. It just sounds pretty good out of the box. I've literally been playing uh, this pedal and been trying it for maybe like five minutes on top of what I've done in this video. Like I took it out of the box to make sure it worked and just went through all the modes and went, okay, cool. They do what I expect them to do. So that is the Boss DD200. In my opinion, this is like the true spiritual successor to the DD20, which is one of my favorite delay pedals of all time. I still own a DD20 and I love it, uh, but the dual delay mode on it, I remember, always sucked. You could only get up to 100 milliseconds on the other delay mode, which wasn't really very functional. But this thing has like a true dual delay mode that lets you do the thing where you set it to a quarter note, 75%, you got quarter note, dotted eighth, that's awesome. There's a whole bunch of different rhythmic subdivisions. You can save presets in memory and it's fully MIDI compatible. Like there's a crazy amount of MIDI control that you can add to this. So if you're using like a MIDI switcher or you've got a rack and a rack drawer, you can incorporate this because it gives you basically studio quality delays as well. So it does all the cool funky character stuff. It does all the pristine stuff and everything in between. So that's the Boss DD200. Let me know what you think. If you're going to go and grab one or if you're going to go the whole hog and get the DD500. Uh, personally, I think they're different enough uh, to attract different audiences where, you know, if you're somebody who really wants a full-on, fully featured tweakable delay, go and get a DD500. If you're somebody who just wants to plug in and twist some knobs, the 200 is probably way more up your alley. Or if you're old school like me, the DD20 is still a great pedal that you can get secondhand for not much. It doesn't have quite as much going on as this one. Uh, it's kind of like the 1.0 version, and this is in every way its successor. Thanks for watching, guys.